and this is Beth, and we are going to break down Chaturanga for you today. So typically a Chaturanga goes right into an up dog in more traditional styles of yoga, but we're going to talk through some other variations that we like to use here at the studio and we'll share with you why. So Beth is going to demo a traditional vinyasa flow. So going from our core plank wave, um, we're just going to jump back to plank like a traditional flow. So she's going to jump back and then go right into that chaturanga. Notice her shoulders dipping down and then she's in her up dog and then back to down dog. So she's going to lower down, take a little rest here for a second. Just talking that through, that is a very quick um, pace typically when it's taught. Um, and there's not a lot of muscle engagement when you're just flowing through that. And we're also taking a lot of joints past range. So we're going to break down just that segment of chaturanga and up dog first. So if she's coming even from her knees into a traditional chaturanga, again, typically we're told to lean forward. So taking the shoulders over the wrist, which is already taking the wrist beyond their functional range. So you're putting a lot of pressure on the wrist and the shoulders and then as she lowers down she's supposed to keep a 90 degree angle keep the elbows in tight right scraping the body and then go right into a back bend after that so and when she's in that back bend you can see that she's mostly hanging out in her low back um, and her shoulder joints all right so let's break this down now we've talked about the core plank wave in another video so that is where we're going to move from to get into our chaturanga and then move into our press back to plank so if she's moving from either core plank wave or maybe from her knees waving forward she's essentially going to find a plank first so that will give her the hand position as long as she's coming from her down dog core plank or waving from her knees her hands are wider than shoulder width. We talked about carrier arms and the importance of that. And then she's starting with a neutral neck and spine. Her hands are wider and as she lowers down, she's essentially doing a push up, but she's coming all the way to the ground first. Notice her shoulders are staying above her elbows still. So she has a healthy range of motion there. She's engaging. She's drawing the shoulders back a little bit inhaling and then instead of doing an up dog we're going to exhale and press right back up to plank because that is going to keep our core engaged and we're actually going to work through the full range of motion for this movement so if we were to just lower down halfway and then go right into a back bend we're missing out on the entire concentric part of a push-up which is essentially what a chaturanga is a chaturanga is a push-up all right, so we're making the push-up more functional, just like we would do the push-up in the gym, and then we're pressing back up so that we're engaging through the core and we're still getting the concentric part of the movement. So imagine if you did a push-up in the gym and you lowered down, but you never pressed back up. You'd be losing the whole other half of that movement. Now, when she goes into an up dog, she is taking her low back, um, lumbar way beyond its functional range. So functional range for the low back to extend um, is about 25 degrees. So if she's in a regular up dog, that is taking her low back into way beyond 25 and sometimes, depending on the person, near 90 degrees. So if she stays in this up dog position but she just lifts and engages through the core, where does she end up? A plank, which is essentially what we're pressing back up to. Another thing when she's lowering down, she's making sure that everything moves together as a system at once. She takes some time at the bottom, maybe she does a few cobra waves, walking the hands out. Now when she's doing the cobra waves, she's not lifting any higher than probably that functional range, about 25 degrees. She's getting some decompressing through the spine and she's still engaging through the core so that this movement isn't coming from her low back. It's coming from the core and the front spine drawing in and up. Lastly, when she lowers down, like I said, she moves everything together at once. Same thing when she presses back up. So just like when you do a push up, you're making sure that you're not dumping into the hips and lowering or doing the same thing going back up. Sometimes we press and then lift. Everything has to move together and making sure that we're not sticking our butt up when we're lowering down and same thing coming up. So that can just show some weaknesses. So maybe we are needing to build up that upper body strength, 
but that's why we really slow it down when we're doing it and that's also why we take it from our knees okay so we don't need to do a slow lower from our toes um, on the yoga mat because typically we're already getting a lot of regular push-ups halfway up and down in the gym. And even if you're not doing regular push-ups off the mat, you're still gonna get a lot more bang for your buck by slowing it down. It's gonna be a lot harder than just going halfway or even sometimes being on your toes. So lots of variations. You can just work on pressing. Maybe you do some um, push-ups on the wall. You could do um, push-ups at an incline. So if you're struggling with just a regular push-up, maybe you don't even lower down. You just stay in a plank on your knees and just hang out there and just practice getting that um, ability to hold your body and lifting up and still engaging through the core and the front spine. So instead of doing that up dog, we're doing a push-up going down, and then pressing back up. And you can use your breath just like you would a push-up, inhaling down, exhaling back up. 